Hey well and good, it's Charlie Atkins, founder of LaSweat TV, and today I'll be leading you through a workout for trainer of the month club. We're gonna be doing a booty and core workout that is body weight only, so let's go ahead and hit the mat. For our first exercise, let's go ahead and come down onto the mat in quadruped position and we'll be doing bird dog. So both hands, both knees are down on the ground, straight line from the head to the tailbone and then all you're doing is reaching opposite arm, opposite leg in both directions. The goal is to not let the body rotate. So I know this seems like a relatively easy exercise for some of us, but if you are doing it correctly, you should take a nice pause and the body should not rotate. Make sure that you're pressing through the heel and not pointing the toe and that you are slowly and gently placing the limbs back down on the mat before you extend the opposite side. If you want to make it a little bit more challenging, you could always place a yoga block on your back and that'll tell you whether or not you're letting the body rotate. Let's go ahead and come down onto our backs. We're gonna be doing dead bug, but we're gonna stick with one side and then the other. So it doesn't matter which side you start on because we're gonna do the opposite side. Put your hand into your thigh and then all you're gonna be doing is extending opposite arm, opposite leg. If it stresses out your neck, you can always lie the head down on the ground. However, if you're looking for more of a challenge, all you have to do is lift the shoulder blades off the mat and really press that hand into your thigh, your opposite thigh. Toe pulls towards the shin. Just like in our bird dog, you're extending limbs out and bring everything back to center. Head can rest on the mat if that feels more comfortable for you. Everything that we do on one side, we'll do on the opposite. So let's go ahead and switch sides, really pressing the hand into the thigh. Toes are flexed, pulling toe in towards the shin, reaching out, using the exhale to bring everything back to center. Make sure that you're looking straight up at the ceiling and not at the extending leg. That's gonna help your neck stay relaxed. And we've got about 15 seconds here. So try to take it a little bit slower with the breath. Use a full exhale to bring everything back to center. Extend through the heel, reaching the arm up overhead. See if you can give me one or two more reps. And then we're gonna head into one of my favorite mobility exercises that also works the glutes. So you're just gonna come into the side plank position, knees are bent, heels are slightly behind the hips, lift yourself up, press the bottom shin down into the mat, extend the leg straight out, and all you're gonna do is keep pressing the hips forward while driving your knee, or sorry, your shin down into the mat. So really think about pressing the hips forward. You should feel this outer edge of the hip fire up. It is a fantastic hip mobility drill and it also trains the core to keep the hips lifted. You've got about five seconds left here. And then everything that we do on one side, we'll do on the other. Remember, we're starting out with smart mobility drills before we head into our booty and core exercises. So switch sides, really press the shin into the mat, lifting the hips or pressing the hips forward. If you want, you can reach the top arm up. The whole goal though, is to press the shin down into the mat, lifting yourself up and away from the mat. You should feel the outer edge of your hip firing up. Reach the top leg straight out, maybe reach the straight, the arm straight up towards the sky. You've got three, two, and then one. From there, another great drill to start your workouts with. We're gonna be doing a split squat, so just come down into a half kneeling position, put your hands in a low V, lift yourself up, and if you notice, my back knee is elevated up off the mat. All I'm doing is holding this position. If this is your first time doing this exercise, there's a chance that you're wobbling. Remember, the more that you repeat it, the more you're gonna be able to hold yourself in this stable position. Think about stacking your shoulders over your bottom knee. You've got less than 10 seconds left to go. Really fire up the hips. Almost there. And then go ahead and release from a side view. Both toes are pointed forward, back toes are tucked under. Straight line from the head all the way to the bottom knee. On your mark, get set and hold. So I'm really firing up this back glute, trying to keep that back knee elevated up off the mat, holding my hands in a low V and training my body to hold this position. This is a great way to start your workouts. It's gonna set your hips up for success. We've got about 10 seconds left here. <sighs> keep breathing. Just try digging all 10 toes down into the mat. You're gonna feel your glutes fire up and then go ahead and stand up. And then for our final warm up drill, we're just gonna do a classic squat. So however you wanna do it, as far as your hands go. But I do want you to put your feet in a position as if you're trying to jump as high as you can 
off the ground. Now, all I'm doing is lowering myself down, lifting myself right back up. Now, in people mostly think that squats are actually pretty easy, but if you do feel squats in your lower back, here's why. Most people are leaning too far forward, so you really wanna think about keeping the chest up, almost like you have a superwoman logo on your chest and you want it to be facing forward as you lower down. Knees drive away from each other, and you just push the earth away from you to get yourself right back up to standing. Good, try to give me two more. And then from there, we're gonna head into our first round of exercises. So we are going to be down on the mat, bear plank position or quadruped position, hands and knees, tuck both toes under, and then all you're going to do is lift your knees up off the mat just like we did in that split squat position, and you're gonna hold yourself. So in three, two, lift up, and then you're just holding this position. If you're ready for a little bit more, I want you to try to tap opposite knee towards opposite hand without letting the body fall or the hips lift up towards the ceiling. Biggest error that I see is people bring the hips up. From here, you're no longer working the core. You're just doing uh, some, what of a downward facing dog position. So knees are just above the mat. You're tapping opposite knee, opposite hand, keeping a straight line from the head all the way to the hips. Good, almost there. From there, go ahead and lie down on your back. We're just gonna be doing fantastic booty exercise. So if I reach my hands out, I should not be able to touch my heels. I'll say that again. I should not be able to touch my heels. Pulling one knee in, I'm gonna do three single leg hip, ra single leg hip raises. Say that three times fast. And then I'm just gonna alternate sides. So if you're feeling this more in your lower back than your glutes, I want you to slow it down. So if I pause at the top, I should really feel my glutes and my hamstrings fire up. You've got about 15 seconds left here. Every time you come down, make sure that the lower back is kissing the mat, lifting up, letting the breath help you. Good. Then from there, all you're going to do, taking it into our core, extend both legs straight up to the sky, plug the elbows down into the mat, lower one heel down, and then the other. So the goal is to reach the heel as far away from the body as possible. Keep the lower back pressed into the mat and try to keep as much of a bend or as little as a bend in my knee as possible. So if I'm really reaching my heel away from the body, I should have a nice straight leg. If you have tight hamstrings, you can always bend the knees and just drop the heel out behind you. You've got about 10 seconds left here. Oh, and then we're gonna come right back up to standing, good. Try to give me one more on each leg. If you notice I reach my hands over my chest, that just makes the exercise a little bit more challenging. Coming up to standing, I want you to take a wide stance, toes are pointed forward, we're just gonna be doing a lateral squat. Some people view this as a lateral lunge. It is not a lunge because our feet are staying static. If you reach the hands out in front of you, all you're doing is pressing the tailbone back, bending one knee and then the other. One of the biggest errors that I see in a lateral squat is that people lean over into the exercise. If all you're doing is pushing the butt back and bending the knee, you're gonna do that exercise properly and it's not going to affect your knees. I'll say that again, if you feel it in your knees, it's most likely because you're leaning into the exercise. Let your legs do the work, not the upper body. Good. From here, we're gonna head right back down to the mat to that bare plank knee tap. If tapping the knees is challenging, you can just hold the bare plank with the knees elevated up off the mat. However, if you are taking the challenge, you're just going to tap opposite knee. Ooh, this will catch up to you. Another exercise that if you wanted to place a yoga block on your back, you can turn it into a more challenging core exercise. Try shifting the weight forward, make sure that the hips are not up. Your knees should be just above the mat. You've got less than 10 seconds. Keep going. And then from there, coming down into those alternating single leg hip raises. Remember when you're lying on your back, you should not be able to touch your heels. The reason why we don't wanna be able, the reason why we do not want to touch our heels is because if you're able to touch your heels, then you're probably going to feel a pull in your knee, 
which I don't think either of us want. So lifting the hips up, slowly lowering down. Pulling that opposite knee as close to the chest as possible. I like to plug my elbows into the mat, making sure that my lower back kisses the mat in between each rep. If you're not feeling it in your booty and you're feeling it in your lower back, slow down the exercise. You've got less than 10 seconds. Nice. From there, staying on your back, we're going to be doing our leg lowers. So palms can be up towards the ceiling or you can plug the elbows down into the ground. Toes pulled towards shin, lowering one heel down and then the other. If you want it a little bit more challenging, reach the arms up off the mat. Don't look at your feet. Look straight up towards the sky and you're not letting your heel touch the ground. So this is a great lower ab exercise as well as a hip mobility exercise, which is why we included it in our booty and core workout. Try to use an exhale to bring the foot back up. And don't forget, you're reaching the heel as far away from the body as possible. Good. Oh, nice. From there, we're gonna be coming on up. We're gonna be doing alternating lateral squat. Some people think it's a lunge, but it's a squat because our feet are staying static. Remember, you don't need to lean into it. When people lean into their lateral squats, they feel it in their knees. You just need to bend the knee, push the tailbone back, drive the knee out, and keep the heart up. And you're just going from one side into the other. Toes are pointed forward. If your toes point out, you're probably gonna cause the knee to wanna go further out than we want it. So toes point forward, go from one side to the other. If you feel a major stretch on your inner thigh, just bring your feet a little bit closer together. We've got less than five seconds. Keep going. Now from there, we're gonna be doing somewhat of a standing-ish series. So this will be our final round of exercises, but they are smart exercises, they are compound. They require the whole body, and we're gonna be starting with a split squat. So I'll face this way for this first one. Half kneeling position, back toe is tucked under, shoulders are stacked over hip. All I'm going to do is lift myself up, lower myself down. Back knee kisses the ground. If you feel a pull on your back knee, chances are you're stepped too far back. So you can kind of pop your back foot forward just a little bit more. One other thing you can do is lean forward slightly so that you load the front leg more and you're gonna get more out of the glute. Good. Switching sides. So start in the bottom position. Make sure that your shoulder is in line with the bottom knee. And then when you're ready to go, you're just keeping the feet static. Again, some people might call this a lunge, but since the feet are not moving, we call it a split squat. It's basically a one-legged squat with the feet static. If you want a little bit more out of your booty or if you feel a pull on your back knee, just lean forward slightly and you'll be able to load that front thigh just a little bit more. Too easy for you, you can always hold onto a set of dumbbells, whatever it takes to make you feel like you're getting that good old burn. From there, we're gonna be coming back down to the mat, headed back to our core. Butterfly sit up, soles of the feet together, knees out wide. All you're doing is reaching up, touching the other side of your feet. Try not to swing yourself up with your arms. Another good way that you do it is if you could re reach up towards the ceiling the entire time. So I'm reaching up to the sky, almost like I'm holding onto a ball, <sighs> lifting up. Well, you know, this is a really challenging exercise, by the way. If you're having trouble sitting all the way up, you could always just do a classic butterfly crunch. But if you're doing a crunch, lift the chest up, not the chin. From here, this is the big exercise, the one that we've been working our way up to. We're gonna be doing a kick through. So, if I can't do a kick through, I'm gonna stick with my bare plank knee taps. Otherwise, if I feel good with my kick throughs, I'm keeping this arm straight. I'm rotating myself through. My glute kisses the mat, and I let my obliques do the work to pull my leg through. Woo! Try not to overshoot it like I just did. So your core controls the movement. Kicking through the heel, glute kisses the mat. You're just alternating one side and to the other. Oh, good. Come on up. Final round of exercises, same ones. We've already did these. 
split squat, butterfly sit-ups, and the good old kick through. So however you want to set it up, if you want to hold on to dumbbells, if you feel a pull on your back knee, chances are your back foot is too far back, or all you need to do is take a slight forward lean to help load that front booty. Another trick that you can do in split squats is pull the feet towards each other as you lower down and lift up. Good. Oh, those always get me. Switching sides. Start in the bottom position. If you start in the bottom position, then you know that your legs are in a good position to do this exercise safely. Pulling my feet together as I lower down and lift myself right back up. Stepping through that front heel, that's gonna help load the glute or load the front leg. Working the glute to get yourself up to standing. Good. It's kind of like cardio. Come on down to the mat. We've got our butterfly sit up, soles and feet together, knees out wide. Let me show you the modification in case you need it. If I'm doing a butterfly crunch, I'm not lifting my chin, I'm lifting my heart. Otherwise, if I can do the sit up, sitting all the way up, reaching for the sky, lowering right back down. Good, you've got about 15 seconds left to go. If you want more of a challenge, lower down slowly. So to make your workouts more challenging, instead of speeding things up, if you actually slow them down, it's gonna give you, it's gonna give you a big old, big old burn. Final exercise of the set, we got our kick throughs. Hope you're ready to go. So remember, if kick throughs challenge me, I'm just gonna stick with my bare plank knee taps. Otherwise, I'm just kicking my heel through, pulling with my extended leg to get me right back to that bare plank position. Letting my back pocket kiss the mat, keeping my arm straight, shoulder is always over the wrist, Good. Less than 10 seconds. Oh, nice. Oh, last one. And there you have it. So that right there was your booty and core workout. Again, I'm Charlie Atkins, and this is Trainer of the Month Club with Well and Good. If you'd like more workouts like this, make sure you subscribe below.